Well, howdy and welcome to the Bender Bunker, your online resource for B Bender Country guitar since 2017. And this, of course, as the title says, is the Brent Mason inspired B Bender lick. So let's just jump right into it. What makes this a Brent Mason inspired B Bender lick? After all, you can't just be putting that without backing it up. And so here's how this works. You know, much like uh, you right now on YouTube, I was recently perusing the internet for country guitar licks. I think we all do it. I'm guilty as charged. And of course, anytime you do that, you're going to see uh, country guitar lick wizard Brent Mason pop up in the top search results because uh, he's a practitioner of the dark arts of twang on that fretboard, is he not? And so I clicked on one of the uh, Brent Mason lessons. He's showing you a twang lick, and it's the uh, first part of the longer lick. And uh, I thought, wow, that is a nice lick. But uh, something worried me about it. Brent was playing it on a PRS guitar. And I like those guitars, but they're not my first choice for twang. So I, I thought, man, this is a twangy lick, but the tone, eh. And then I got to wondering, hey, why didn't Brent play that on his signature telly, the one you see in the thumbnail of this video that we all know him for? One, I think the tone could have a little bit more twang to it, and then that's also a B-bender, and I think a B-bender really would add some extra punch to that lick. So the lick he did is what you just heard, the first half of the opening lick you just heard is in fact a Brent Mason lick. And I translated it over to the B-Bender guitar. Now, if you want to see that Brent Mason lick, I'm not going to direct link it or anything. I don't want to get in trouble with any algorithms. If you type this uh, search term into the YouTube uh, search engine, you'll find it. And you'll see it's less than four minutes long. He's playing a PRS. You'll get it. So there he is. He's got his PRS and he's doing this opening lick. <laughs> Okay, I like the lick, but again, what would it sound like with a bender? So I translated it over, and that's what we came up with. And I thought, well, that's kind of fun. I just learned a Brent Mason lick and translated it over to the bender. Good for me. Now what? And I thought, well, let's just keep going. What if we add it on from there? Now, the lesson with Brent goes on. You get to learn a lot more of the lick. That's not really what I'm chasing. I'm just trying to get the creative juices flowing. But that lick was enough to get me going. So now we get into the second half of that intro you heard. I'll leave it right there like Brent did on that G note. And so I'm going to play the Brent Mason part into what I added on so you could get that Brent Bunker unholy hybrid of Bender Twang that you didn't know you needed. So this is what it sounded like all together. you have it the first half is brent the second half is bunker i think it works and i think it'll be a fun lick for you to learn and put in your twang bender arsenal and i think i'll be able to teach it to you pretty quick there so i say go grab that bender guitar out of the case maybe even the fender brent mason signature model that'd be perfect for this lesson and i know a few of you have it because you sent me emails and that's a, that's a fine guitar i wouldn't mind having one myself i'm going to break this lesson in half you'll see the chapter headings on the bottom of your screen first half will be the brent mason lick second half will be the bunker lick I hope you learn them both, but pick the one you want. And uh, you got the guitar? Good. All right, let's get going now with the Brent Mason inspired B-Bender lick here on the Bender Bunker. All right, let's get rolling with the Brent Mason lick. And we are going to start as the intro did with the actual Brent Mason lick translated over to B-Bender for your B-Bending convenience. And it is going to sound like this. <laughs> let's knock that out, shall we? Now, these are double stops, two notes together. And so what you're doing is the top two strings, I've got my middle finger on the B string, what is that, eighth, and then my ring finger next to it on the high E ninth. And then what I'm doing is I'm gonna take my thumb on the B string and my index finger on the high E, looks like this. You could take a pick if you wanted, and either down pick them all like that, or up pick them, whatever works for you. I like the finger approach because that way when it's a double stop, you could technically play both notes, pick both notes at the exact same time. It makes it a little bit twangier. With the pick, you've always got to start with one string and roll into the next as fast as you can. So dealer's choice. That's how I'm doing it with the thumb and the index finger. So we're going to make this like a six, I'm going to call this a six pick event, pick six. And so what I'm doing is hitting those two together. Again, you're on the B string uh, eighth and the high E ninth. And that's just kind of those top two strings, that seventh shape we always use, we're in A, so that's, that'd be the seventh shape, bender shape for A. And so then we're going to go ahead and pick that. As we do the very first pick of the two together, we take the bender up. And then we're gonna go, that's one of five. Two, three, four, five. On the fifth, we're letting the bender down. 
So up on the first, down on the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. And then immediately for the sixth and final part of this is I'm letting my index finger fall on the B string seventh, taking my middle finger up and finishing like that. So as the bender comes down, once it gets down, I switch over to the B string seventh with my index finger. All right, we're gonna go down to the next position, which is again, B string and high E, middle finger on the B string, ring finger on the high E, top two strings on the third. Same pick six event, all right? We're going up on the first, we're coming back down on the fifth with our bender, and then we're, same as before, we're letting, we're going one fret down this time, B string second with the index finger. So that's gonna sound like this. Again, nothing's changed my pick hand, still thumb and index. So again, like I did before, once the bender's down, I'm switching one fret down on the B string with my index finger. Now it gets even easier. What? Yeah, it does. So now I'm gonna take my hand off completely and I'm just gonna use my thumb to activate the bender here on the end of the neck. But the next position, and again, this is a pick six event as well. Top two strings open. Up on the first pick, down on the fifth with the bender. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm using my index finger now on the B string, or excuse me, G string, second fret for an A note and then I'm gonna go open G. And that's the end of the whole sequence. So all together. Now when Brent plays it in his video, that last part, he kind of takes the G note up here. But since we're rolling into a whole nother section, that didn't make much sense for me. So we're just doing the regular same note, but open G note. All right, so let's get that nice and twangy now. Really pick the heck out of it down here. And you can really use your bender on the ones of that pick six event, right? Really get it up there. Right? And that's what he's doing with his fingers, but we're doing it with our benders. That, my friends, is the end of the Brent Mason Lick section. Practice that, get it nice and fluid. We're ending on that G note. And then uh, prepare yourself now for the bunker half coming up next. Well, all right, looks like you signed on for the second half, the bunker portion of our program. Nice to have you on board. I think when we put the two together, it's gonna be one uh, bendy twangy festival. Let's see if I'm telling the truth or not. So if you'll recall, we last left our heroes coming out of part one on an open G string. <laughs> ring in there. That's what we want. We want it to ring. That'll work in our favor. Here's the part we're about to learn. Sounds hectic, but I promise you I'm going to get you through it quick here. So bear with me. You ready? All right, let's go. So we've got that open G string ringing coming out of part one. Let's go ahead with our ring finger on the four string fourth fret. And then we're just going to Note that one note there and slide it immediately up to the fifth. And then we get there, we're gonna go ahead and reemphasize that ringing G note next to it by picking the open G string again. So we're just going four, five, and the open G. Now I've got two G notes ringing together, right? And I'm using my index finger, I'm popping it because I really like that pop sound. Pulling up on it. All right, as that G string's ringing, I'm gonna let my ring finger go back to where it started on the fourth fret. When I get there, I'm gonna pick it again just once and roll from that fourth note I just picked down to the second fret and then open string on the fourth. Just a triplet roll. Sounds like that. Now, as we do that triplet roll, four, two, open on the fourth, we then allow our middle finger to go to the fifth string third for one note and a little twangy waggle. for contact. Now, did you hear as we came out of part one into what we just learned, there really isn't much of a lag. They go seamlessly together. That's important for your timing. All right, bender's unengaged. We haven't really done much with that. We're about to, because we're gonna learn this next section. Sounds nice, because it sounds nice for A, and this whole lick is an A. So to do that, 
we're going to be picking in order the fifth, fourth, third, second string. We're going to be just going to be going down the line. We're going to do different things. We're going to be rolling on the strings, but the, each of this sequence starts with an open string pick. So starting on your fifth string, you pick it open, and then you're going to roll on the third and fourth with your middle and your ring. So one pick and a roll. Go immediately to the open four string, pick it, and you're going to roll second and fourth with your index and ring. So now we have. Now when you get to that last note, four string fourth with your uh, ring finger, let it ring. No reason to deaden that. So now you're going to hit the third string open, and then let your index finger fall where it already kind of is onto the second fret on that A note. So just one note there, all together. But that way we can allow the fourth string, fourth fret, and our A note on the third string to, to, to ring nicely together for A. Now, as I promised, the next string, the open B, we pick it, but that's when we take our bender up. So it's open B string, bender up. And now you've got your second, third, and fourth strings ringing together. Sounds great. All right, all together. For context. Okay, Bender's fully engaged right now. right now. Keep it that way. We're gonna come up here for a six note sequence. Sounds like this. My hand goes up here. We're going to be kind of where we started this party on the seventh shape for A up here on the ninth fret and eighth fret on the high E and the B string. So I'm getting in position for that. But what really starts this sequence of six notes are the top two strings open. So high E, B string open is how we start. Again, I'm always using my thumb and my index. So one, two, three, four is going to be nine, eight. I'm letting my ring finger go high E ninth and then my index finger on the B string. Eight. So there's your first four notes of the six. Top two open, nine eight. Then you're still engaged, haven't changed that. Next thing I'm doing is taking my finger off and doing the high E open again. So that's your fifth note. So now we have one, two, three, four, five. And you guessed it, now we're gonna pick that, that uh, B string on the eighth with our index finger and let the bender down for our sixth note. So it's six notes all together. We come into it already engaged on the bender. Top two open, one, two, nine, eight, three, four, high E open, five, bender on the eighth down. Bender's unengaged. All right, for contact. Here, everything's ringing sympathetically. That's what you, sh once you get it smoothly, that's what you should have going on. All right. So we just did our six notes up here and we unengaged the bender. The bender's unengaged now. So we're gonna do a triplet. And the first note of this triplet is gonna be live, the next two are dead. And that's what you're hearing. I got a little slap back on with these speakers, but it's one, two, three, the second and third are dead. And what I'm doing there is I've got my, I never moved my index finger from the B string eighth. I'm allowing my ring finger and middle finger to go on the third and first string like I'm making that seven shape because it's so normal for me to be up here in the seven shape for A for benders. That I'm just putting them there anyway by habit and then I'm not pressing down on them so I can get the dead note. So I think what I'm doing is I'm coming down then I'm going B string live on the eighth dead noting on the third string and then I'm coming up into the third note dead note on the high E. And so that is with my index finger and then I go thumb and then index finger. Now, here's the next thing you need to know for this puzzle. When you get to that third dead note of that triplet, that's your key to pre-engage the bender again. By about the time you hit that last dead note of that triplet, you need the bender engaged. I've noticed what I, when I'm starting to take it up is when I get to, obviously I can't do it on the first note because I don't want that to be a bent B and I'm starting with my B string on the eighth. So when I get to the second, the dead note, that's when I can do it and not be heard because I'm pre-engaging. And then I do that last dead note, engaged now got it pre-engaged just did the triplet hit my last dead note 
I'm gonna take my fingers off and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the B string open to let the bender down in a very obvious way. And then the minute the bender comes down, I hit the G string open next to it. That's super easy. Battery's dying. We got to get through this. So here we go. Now we got that G string open, right? We did the pre engage on the bender. Open B string, down. open G string. They're ringing together. Now, when you have an open G string, you're almost drawn to it. You can't help yourself. Your hand has to go down here behind the nut and give it a full step waggle. doing there is like if I had a G bender, right? I'm trying to go up a full step to that A note. And uh, if, you know, we've said this many times over the five plus years on the bunker, anytime you can go behind the nut and grab a G string, the audience tends to prefer it. We've said that many times. It's, it's kind of a running bit here. Can't pass up that joke. All right, all together on the sequence. That's it, you have all the pieces for the Brent Bunker hybrid lick, okay? I'm gonna play it all the way through slowly and I'll let you go ahead and have your way with it, if you will. So let's start at the beginning, here we go. That's it. The phone's running out of power. I'm running out of steam. I gotta go get a beverage. I'm dry, I'm parched. But I think we got enough here to make you dangerous with the Brent Mason inspired B Bender lick here at the Bender Bunker. Put the parts together, work them slowly, take the parts you like, make them your own. That's really the point of these lessons. I've always said that from the beginning. And I'm gonna go back to the Bender Laboratory and start coming up with more licks. I This one caught me off guard, just like you, looking at YouTube, catching some uh, twang licks here and there where I can. And the next thing you know, I'm on the channel showing you this one. So I love it when a plan comes together. Who said that? Put that in the comments. All right. I'm going to leave you with our motto, of course. It's never too late to go on a bender. Certainly hope you do. And I'll see you again real soon here at the Bender Bunker. But until then, keep it bent.